Hey guys, it's me, Jimmy. Today I'm here in the beautiful island of Jeju in Korea. It's like Hawaii of Korea where a lot of people come for vacation. And today I'm going to be trying two different buffet restaurants for their lunch buffet. One that is only $6 and the other one that is $60. I'm sure they're both very tasty, but how do they compare? And what do you get for your money? Let's find out. I'm going to start with a more affordable buffet today. It's called Mire Bife Jeongsik. It's in the second biggest city on the island called Hogipo. It's on the southern end. As with other more affordable buffet restaurants in Korea, they serve traditional Korean food. And I actually had to wait list to get in because it is simply very popular. So let's go see what it's like. So it's a humble restaurant that serves a few main dishes and several Korean style side dishes. So let's try all of them. This is going to be my first meal of the day. I'm extremely hungry. I'm going to start with some good rice. You know what I want to do? I want to have that rice in this bowl and have some of that curry served on top. That's Korean mom style fried rice. I love the fact that even at their price point, they have this jeukbukgum. So they didn't have a massive range of options. But they were taking a good care of their protein department with their pork and fried chicken. Fried chicken. I'm gonna use all of my IQ to turn this into a fried chicken curry. Wow, I'm so genius. A lot of veggies, they have broccoli here too. Some good seaweed. What is this? Ah, yukke jang. Ah, 감사합니다. I'm gonna get some of that yukke jang. There's my round one. They also had this gim or dried seaweed. Now who doesn't like that? Round one doesn't look too bad, does it? The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that I am, in fact, genius. How did I think of making this uh, chicken karaoke curry dome? Rice, curry. Big chunky fried chicken. Oh, this isn't boneless chicken, by the way. I just picked the ones that looked boneless. I like how in Korean style curry, the vegetables are really chunky. Like onions, carrots, potatoes. They're like big fat cubes. So the Korean army used to serve curry really often. I'm sure they still do, but they really took chunky to the extreme. Like they had half the potato in there, but curry was one of the better tasting things that army had. Their food was terrible back in the days. This is him, dried seaweed. This is part of the buffet. You could do this with the gim. Take a piece, wrap that fried rice with it. Pretty decent kimchi. Some seaweed, pretty much just clean seaweed. It's barely seasoned. In fact, I don't think it's seasoned at all. It tastes like seawater. Mm. Yeah, that's definitely Pacific Ocean flavored. What really surprises me about this place is that they have two major protein, this cheukbukgum, marinated pork, That's pretty good quality too. And that's fried chicken. It's like a very crude form of fried chicken where they didn't really season it. They just battered it and fried it. Now it's not as juicy as some of the Korean fried chicken franchise chicken, but it has lots of meat and it was freshly fried as well. There's beauty in this simplicity. Korean army had fried chicken that is exactly like this, except Theirs had more bones in it. And what I'm realizing about this buffet is that their food is like the Korean army food, but the most popular of their stuff. Fried chicken, jeukbokgum, and um, I already finished it, but the curry, they're very popular in the Korean army. Maybe they have a five-star hotel buffet now, but back when I was in the military, their food was not very impressive. And one of the very few things that were enjoyable were these. These taste almost exactly like how it tasted in the army. Can you guys imagine me being in the army? Such a violent place for a sweet soul like me. And I'll be honest with you, 
I didn't make a great soldier. Like physically, I was a very good soldier because I was like extremely fit in Korean standards and I was a really good shot too. But I was so deeply depressed while I was in the military that I couldn't even function as a person. Oh, by the way, they said this is byodagiku. There's like little shreds of meat in there, barely any. It's mostly just veggies and spicy sauce. It's just a little spicy. Now that tastes like something that my mom would make. But yeah guys, when I was in the military, I was so depressed, it was like unbelievable. Like every living second was so painful, I hated it. And I was so ready to hate people. Like I didn't want to make friends in the military because I just hated being there. This fried chicken is giving me flashbacks of the military days, back when I was young, but didn't have a dream. By now, I've been to quite a few of these extremely affordable buffets in Korea. And I would say this is one of the better ones that I've been to. To be 100% honest with you guys, I'm not too into many of their side dishes. I think they're like, okay, they're definitely not bad. But I love their fried chicken and the jeukbokgum, their military grade. Okay, time for round two. I'm gonna rinse and repeat. Some more rice. More of that chunky curry. Some more of that jeukbokgum. Some fried chicken. I'm gonna be a bad boy, skip all the Korean dishes. I will take some of these lettuce though. And some Korea leaves. This plate is called the South Korean military dream dish. Talking about the military, do you guys want to hear a funny story? So my first real exposure to K-pop was back in the military. That is because in the South Korean military, there was this rule where at 6.30 in the morning, everybody has to wake up, right? The moment they wake up, the lowest ranked soldier in the room has to turn the TV on, turn the channel to MTV, and put the volume at 19. MTV in Korea plays K-pop all day, and everybody in Korea apparently likes K-pop, especially the South Korean soldiers. Yeah, we would always wake up to listening to FX, Girls' Generation, all those ladies. Oh, and of course in our dining hall, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they always play K-pop. Back then, I didn't know much about K-pop. I didn't really like it. So it kind of drove me crazy that everyone was doing that. Yeah, it was definitely not the highlight of my life. What I also realized back in the military was that a lot of us Koreans have a really bad relationship with power. Like, in the South Korean military, you get promoted not based on your performance, but based on how long you are there for. So like every six months you get promoted and no matter who you are, you can exercise your power on anybody who's under you. And you realize that all these people that are like otherwise super nice, super quiet, super shy, they suddenly become these abusive monsters when they can exercise their power. Of course, it really depends on the person, but at least that's my personal opinion. I must say though, Korean military, it's not all bad. Like being in the military gives you some level of discipline. So you realize that a lot of Korean men, they're very clean. They have immaculate hygiene. By smelling bad in a tiny living quarter, it's like you're friendly firing your own friends with a biochemical weapon. And that being said, going to an anime convention is like a total biochemical death match if you haven't been to one. People would bully you in the military if you don't take shower and you smell bad, which is like one of the very few times that I would like to side with the bullies. Pebulo oh. as boy. Now I think I am done with the food. Perhaps I should get some desserts. Surprisingly, they have desserts here. That is this shike that I really like. The South Korean military definitely didn't have this. That's good. It, it feels like they made it here. This tastes like rice wine that is extremely sweet with grains of rice. Non-alcoholic, by the way. Ah, oh, that was a great meal. You guys know how when you smell certain things or you taste certain things, you get like flashbacks of memories? I got very much of that today. Mostly of the bad ones. Uh. They also have this instant coffee sticks too. So these are like coffee packets where if you open it and just pour it in hot water and mix it, that becomes coffee. It has cream and sugar in it too. For some reason, Koreans back in the days used to really like it. I think these days, black coffee has gotten a lot more popular though. All right, so I'm out of there. What did I think of the place? I mean, for $6 for a buffet, 
I don't think there's much room to complain. Like I was saying, I wasn't too into their Korean vegetable-based side dishes, but overall, I thought it was a great meal. And that makes me wonder, how is this going to compare to the one that I'm about to try now? It's not too far from here. Let's go try right now. By the way, this is my rental car in Jeju. Remember when Hyundai used to be a poor people car? Now they make really great cars. So here's something different. This time I came to another lunch buffet that is about 10 times more expensive. It's called La Seine in Lotte Hotel Jeju. It's probably one of the best lunch buffets that you can get on the island. Let's go find out how good it is. Can't wait to get my hands on all of them. But before I do, I want to try this first. I had to quickly get something that is very brunchy. Like this is an American morning. So I got some waffles and french fries. And guys, this looks good. Let's have that French toast. Did I say French fries earlier? It's French toast. In a lot of Korean buffet, they don't have amazing Western food. Especially when it comes to brunch items like these, they tend to be very frozen foodie. But this place was different. So super nice and fluffy. I feel like you could serve this at a brunch restaurant. This is legitimately good. Mm. Let me have that waffle as well. You know, I've been to a lot of buffet restaurants and when they have pancakes, waffles, french toast, even the most expensive buffets have them really soggy and not very tasty. But these are really good. Now I feel like an American boy. And I imagine I have a mom that tells me that she loves me all the time. Tells me that I'm the smartest boy while I'm really not. She'd love me and inflate my ego so much that by the time I'm 25, I think I'm way smarter and way hotter than I really am. I'm kidding guys, inaccurate self-assessment isn't an American trait, it's a human trait. That's why I feel cool all the time. Alright, let's get some real food now. So it seemed to me that they have a pretty good mix of Western and Asian cuisine. I mean at this price point, I expected it to have some variety. But at least by looking at it, the quality seemed really solid as well. Okay, their pizza looked whatever. Teriyaki chicken. Oh my, they have a whole Panda Express here. There's a lot more food in this buffet, but let's start by trying some of these. I went a little international with this one. Some Chinese, some Western, some Korean. Let's start with this egg noodle. It looks like skinny Panda Express chow mein. I'm sorry for keep saying Panda Express. I know that's not Chinese Chinese, but we can relate to that. This is great noodles. I don't know if you guys can agree with me, but I love it when chow mein has a slightly dry surface and that chewy undercooked texture. This one had that. That tasted like a luxurious version of Panda Express chow mein. Some sweet and sour pork. Crispy and juicy. The meat dumpling. Let's have that chicken teriyaki as well. I mean, it looks really good to me. Okay, not everything that they had was amazing. Perhaps the chicken teriyaki is a little hard, maybe a little dry. I'm not sure what it is. It looks like steamed egg with some cheese sprinkled on top. That had a lot of butter in it too. That was so good. Here's a Korean dish. I know that bulgogi is very popular internationally, like a lot of foreigners like it. Did you guys know that us Koreans don't really eat bulgogi very often? It's kind of like bibimbap, it's like more iconic, but we don't really eat them very often. Mm. So some places make their bulgogi soaked wet, some places make it more caramelized. This is the kind that is more caramelized and dry. I gotta say, I prefer this style over the other. Mm. Mm. Look at this meatball. Mm. Filled with cheddar cheese. So healthy, bro. Mm. Very satisfied with their food so far. I think I'm gonna have to go get more. I went more Western this time, because after that French toast, I'm a westernized boy. So here's a plate of pasta and some pizza, some ham, and guess what? They give you a real piece of steak too. This is all you can eat as well. I don't know what you guys think. That looks like a really good steak to me. Allow me to start with the steak. I wouldn't want this to get cold. Wow. That looks and feels like real steak. But how good of a steak is this? That's a whole another question. 
that's like medium well done. Little dry. Like it looks better than it tastes to be honest. But honestly, very good for a buffet steak. And you guys know I'm excited for this. Their pizza. The dough was a little hard, little dense. Hmm. Their pizza is not very impressive. Their cheese and the tomato sauce, they're okay. But I feel like their dough is just a little too dense. Let's try some of that cream pasta with bacon. You know guys, I think I figured them out. I feel like they're Western dishes. They're okay, but not enough to impress anyone. But I wasn't too worried because they had more food that I can try. They have four kinds of cereals. Are you cereal right now? They had very quality looking sashimi. That's a fat stick of yellowtail sashimi. I believe they're in season during winter. Some American style sushi and just two nigiri sushi. They got nice hummus with nacho chips. Oh, I love that. Egyptian beans. I don't know, those beans look pretty Korean to me. Hams, some rich people wine drinking cheese, nuts, some nice looking fruits too. We should have some mangoes. Oh my god, they got some Korean duck, rice cakes. Oh, they look really quality too, look. They look really pretty. Some traditional Korean dishes that I'm honestly not that into. Sorry, sorry. I, I, of course I love Korean food. They got some legit looking yogurts here too. Here's a silly thing that you guys can also do, which is getting cereal at an expensive buffet. I don't know, I just couldn't stop myself. Like I said, I am now an American boy. I love cereals. I always get so greedy that I always go for two different flavors at once. I got Fruit Loops and Chocolate Checks. What can I say? If child obesity had a flavor, it would taste just like this. I got a few more stuffs here. A mix of different cultures. Let me try their sushi rolls. And here's their California roll. You see, a lot of people hate on these modified sushi. I was one of them too. But honestly, I think they can be good. It's just that most of the time they're not. And the one that I had here, they're, they're not worth a try. <laughs> but is their sashimi worth a try? That's decent sashimi. Some yellowtail sashimi as well. So I felt like their sashimi is very good, whereas their sushi was just okay. And I don't mind that at all. It just means that their fish is really good. I also started seeing a lot of these cheese in some of the nicer Korean buffet recently. And while I appreciate it, I don't think I've had one that I thought was particularly good. I don't get the hype behind the cheese. What I did really like was this hummus with chips. These hummus chips are really nice. If you guys don't know what hummus is, it's a Middle Eastern dipping sauce that's made from chickpeas, sesame, lemon juice, and garlic. You guys didn't ask for this extra information, but I first tried it when I went out on a date with an American female individual, and she told me that it's like Syrian guacamole, which is a great way to describe it. Here's some with guacamole. By the way, this buffet had a pretty decent guacamole. Avocados are pretty expensive in Korea, and it really upsets me when I see businesses selling guacamole and it's like half liquid. Here's a Korean black sesame rice cake. Some red bean paste in it too. It's very chewy and a little bland in flavor, but I feel like the flavor of the black sesame powder on the surface and the red bean paste add just enough fun to the rice cake. And this other one's called omegi duck, which is supposed to be a local specialty in Jeju. Traditionally, it's made from foxtail millet. I'm not sure if this one is. What I will say is that if you're expecting something sweet, this might taste a little too bland. I feel like I've had enough food by now. What kind of desserts do they have? Okay, let's have some desserts and a coffee. I'm kind of excited for this one. This is apple tart. Oh, I wish it was served warm. This is really cold. So the pastry part of the tart got a little soggy. So I would say this isn't masterfully crafted, but it was still very enjoyable. That was good. Just, just a little sour in my taste. Egg tart. Mm. Now this on the other hand, I thought was really good. 
It was warm, sweet, and crispy at the same time. These cakes were also pretty good. They were sweet and they were served at the right temperature. But there's a certain feel of factory madeness, if you guys know what I mean. I would have the egg tart over and over again. Probably not these. These are just okay. To end this meal, I got this ice cream. I got it from their machine. It feels really high quality. I don't know if it really is. This reminds me of McDonald's ice cream. So you guys might be asking, is it worth 50 something dollars? In my honest opinion, I think it is for many different reasons. One, fancy buffets in Korea have gotten so expensive now that they're often easily over $100. Are those places much better than this place? I, I don't think so. In my opinion, this lunch was about as good as one of those places. Except, sure, you, maybe you don't have things like lobsters or king crabs, but everything else gets pretty close. It's also on an island, a vacation spot, which makes other dining options pretty expensive anyway. So a really good buffet lunch for $50, I don't think it's bad at all. If you ask me what my favorite was, I would say there was the French toast. <laughs> hey Jimmy, so which one was better? The cheaper one, the more expensive one? You guys know I always lean towards the more affordable one, but in this case, I think it's fair to give it a tie. Just because the more expensive option was generally so good that I think their price tag is easily justified. I've been to a whole bunch of places that charge like double what they charge and those places serve the same level of food. Okay then, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna have to get inside before I get skin cancer. Goodbye guys, go watch my other videos.